Yeah. So how have you been? How have you been handling like the quarantine? I know everyone, yeah. you got a big family, you got some youngins there. Yeah, Where are yeah, you yeah. right now? Uh, I'm in Connecticut. <gasps> That's where my sister lives. I have an apartment here. It's like right down the street from, from her and my two little nieces. We were doing a little home court app action. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I'm lucky because um, like all my family is, is healthy and, and quarantined and doing okay. Um, both me and my sister had to yell at our parents, of course, early on, like, just stay home. Stay home. It's like, just I want to stay, stay home, home normally. But yeah. like, now they want to spread their wings and fly. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. This talking about, no, it's for the older people. I'm like, you are old. You're over 70. Like, they're talking to you. So they weren't quite getting it. Um, but yeah, so family and friends. I have some friends, actually, who, who tested positive. Um, some others that are showing symptoms. Yeah, but they're, they're okay. Like, it's mm. nothing. Um, so because I'm lucky, I can sit here and say, like, I'm just chilling. This is like, not that different from my normal life. And, you know, for all of us that have played overseas, like, everyone, want, everyone's always asking us like, oh, what's overseas like? What's it like? I'm like, you're actually living it right now. Quarantine <laughs> life is overseas life. Yes. Seriously, like you just chill, you're watching, you're binging on shows, you go to the grocery store, you might roll up, they might not have chicken. And you're like, okay. I'll yep. just eat something else. Or you don't even know that's you can't even know. read. Yeah, or is. you can't even read. Yeah, that's for sure. So yeah, See, I'm just like hanging out. Chilling. Good. Um, actually, I want to go back to overseas, but first, while you're chilling, what have you been watching? I have started Tiger King. And uh, you I'm, have to. I don't know how I feel. Like you know how you feel at this point. You have to watch it just so you can like participate in conversations because it's like it's the, it's just that show right now. It's wild. I had I finished it like a week or so ago. Got a lot of opinions on it. Um, it was wild. It was wild. That's all I have to say. It's crazy. I, know. I don't want to give any spoilers. There's some wild storylines in that thing. I know. Um, make sure you guys keep on. commenting. We want to know your thoughts on Tiger King. Also, any questions you have for the one and only, the GOAT, uh, Sue Bird. Now, you talked about overseas life. You, I forgot what, who did the documentary. Was it ESPN? It probably was us. Where you, got, you talked about playing in Russia and how you went through a unique experience. Can you like do the Spark Notes version of what <laughs> it was like playing in Russia and some of the crazy things that happened to you? Yeah, um, so what you're talking about is it's a 30 for 30 podcast and it's called uh, The Spy Who Signed Us. It's um, myself and Dee are kind of the two, Diana Taurasi, we're kind of the two characters. So I don't want, I, I won't give too many spoilers if you guys want to check out that podcast, it's a quick one. Um, but yeah, we, we were, Basically, we played on a team that was owned by, um, his name is Shoptai, and he kind of was a colorful, colorful character, if you will. And we didn't really know, like, we kind of knew about this, like, other side of him, which is, like, mafia ties and, like, different dealings in the Russian world. I mean, who the hell knows what goes on over there? <laughs> so we just saw the basketball owner side. And so it's, it's kind of some stories about what, what life was like for us living over there, playing for him. Um, I'm trying to think like would be a quick, a good quick yeah, story, like a, like an example. And I think we, I think we tell this one on the podcast, but an example is, you know, it was like the final game of the season. We were all going home the next day, but we were in another city outside of Moscow. And so we had to like fly back to Moscow to then catch like all of our flights to like wherever, New York, LA, wherever you're going. And the way it worked out is the flight that would have taken off the night of the game was just like a little too late. Like we wouldn't, have, I mean, I'm sorry, a little too early. Like we wouldn't uh -huh. have made it. Like the game was at seven, the flight was at yeah. nine, not yeah. gonna make it. He legit had a commercial flight moved back. Commercial. <laughs> so the flight was no longer at nine. It was like at 11. And we all got to catch that flight after the game to make it back to Moscow. Oh yeah, I don't I mean, who the hell knows who he called. But just stuff like different things like that. Like one time D got caught in customs, called Shaptai within like 30, 45 minutes, boom, she got a new visa. Like just like wild. And those are like the mild <laughs> versions. Like there's some medium, then there's some hot. And there's like <laughs> spicy ones. Real um, spicy. Yeah, those ones you're gonna have to like catch me out to hear me about those ones. <laughs> so so NECA, NECA played in Russia for a little while. And you know, like I know we have yep. these ideas of these places in our head, but she had a really good experience there. She was there for five years. I visited her three mm -hmm. times out there. And I will never forget, this is probably like, is between mild and spicy yeah <laughs> so you know like whenever you go overseas it's like you're trying to figure out how you have your paychecks like how are they going to pay you is it direct deposit like all that stuff i remember 
there was a brown bag involved. So like, bam, money, brown bag. Naka just found it herself. Yeah. And, and, we're, and my whole family was like, ah, uh, 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 we, we ain't gonna do that. <laughs> no, You're not trying to carry that much cash, no. No, not at all. Yeah, there would be stories like, where like, yeah, it would be like a big game. They would be like, you know, it's a big game. So uh, this is actually the first team I played on did this. Like, oh, it's a big game. So, um, you know, if you win this one, we'll give you 5,000. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so now you're out. So we just we used to call this is actually D. Diane used to call those the rim games. She's like, I'm trying to get some new rims. I'm trying to get some new rims. Oh, I'm rims. like, I'm not spending my 5K <laughs> on new rims, but I feel you. I will support that Honestly, cause. that's what made us <laughs> motivated overseas. Like, playing overseas, it was all about the bonus. It's like bonus basketball. Yeah. The bonuses it's were totally like, right. it's so funny. I'm, like, looking, trying to see what the score is. It was a close <laughs> game. I mean, you know what happened. You know what happened. I know what happened. I know. I was a baby. Um, <laughs> speaking of your UConn days, I know everyone asks you all the time, like, tell me a Gino story. Tell me a Diana story. How do you think it's, like, yeah. that experience compares to your experience professionally? You know what I mean? Yeah, um, man, I mean, when you're in college, you're a kid. So there's like this element of like your coach is or are kind of like these parental figures. So like whatever they say, you know, and I feel like when you become a professional, it's, it's you're, you're on like more even ground, you can have like more conversations. Um, so yeah, in college, like anytime you got yelled at or anything, you just kind of like had to take it and coach Ariyama. I mean, he's tough. He's tough. It's it's like you're thankful for it when you're done, but in the moment, I mean, if you don't go back to your dorm room and like, you know, MF him left and right with your roommates, then like you're. It's actually like ironic. You're like not being coached right. Like that's what I think he like wanted us to hate him because he was just so hard on us. But it obviously, it 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 worked out and and you, and you learn from it. But yeah, I mean, I can't really think of any specific stories off the top, but it was tough. And that that's like the biggest difference is, you know, college coaches. Uh, they're no joke. Yeah, one thing I've learned about you, you on players, um, is that I think all of that toughness, because we had our own version of toughness with Coach Tara, mm -hmm. that toughness yeah. makes you rally together, you know, like you're all, you know, oh, they don't understand, so let's rally together and figure this out, right? Yeah. But I, I also noticed something about you, you on players. We talk, you know, we're in the WNBA, we go uh -huh. out after games, y'all go hard. <laughs> You trying to get me in trouble? I already no. said this. I already said this once on my own IG live. Got me in trouble. Um, yeah, I mean, listen. If I had to say it simply, we know when to work, you know, and we do that hard, and we know when to play, and we do that hard. So we we have a we have a good balance. It's like it's just something about our work ethic. It goes both ways, you know. It goes both ways. You can't separate. <laughs> it goes both ways. You can't so um, obviously, you know, we're both on the WMBPA. And so we negotiated the CBA. That was a once in a lifetime experience. For some yeah. of you guys who are watching this video, the CBA is a collective bargaining agreement that we just agreed to with the WNBA. It sets the terms for the WNBA. And I know some of y'all in the comments right now want to talk shady about women's basketball. I'm not even looking. We ain't going nowhere, meaning, you know, I know this season we're, we're, we're dealing with coronavirus and we, we all care about one another and we want to handle that situation right. We want to be in a place where we can be safe and, you know, the fans can experience it. So the next season that we have, obviously, we're, mo we're building some really good momentum. But also, you know, dealing with the postponements is Olympics. And I don't want to put your age out there, Stu, but, like, you are the I'm best. Old. You I'm are old. the best at keeping – your body on point, meaning <laughs> you, I think if the next Olympics start, you you already have four gold medals. You, you're going for the fifth. And then you might be like, Fawdy, Shawdy, you know what I mean? Right? Like, Not might be. I will be. <laughs> you will be. How, yeah, I know. This is the one thing about this Olympics being this year. I was like, this is perfect. My birthday's in October. I'll still be 39. I won't be having to hear this 40 talk. And then goddamn coronavirus. Oh, man, man. How, right. how do you feel? I mean, are you still, like, you still feel fine with the postponement? And even our season, we're dealing with it. How would you evaluate the state of sports, given what the situation we're in right now? Yeah, well, for me personally, um, the truth is, like, I, I, I would never sit here and be like, I'm playing in the next Olympics. It's a year away. I would never sit here and even talk about, I'll talk about this summer because it's here. But even talking about next WNBA season, I'm not, that. this is how I've been the last, like, three, four years, people always ask like, oh, what do you see? And, and I'm always like, listen, I'm on a one-year plan. 
I've been saying that for a couple of years. And the way I see it is if I do what I need to do and work out and take care of myself and all that stuff, and I'm still able to play at a high level and the season comes around and here we are, you know, like, boom, I'm going to do it. Same with Olympics. So I'm just kind of like business as usual. And, you know, I mean, like what people don't understand is there's like steps. It's not like they pick the team today. You know, there's steps that have to be taken. And along the way, like come October, come February, come, you're going to know if your game is on point. And so if my game's on point and I'm, you know, asked to be on the team, I would 100% do it. But till then, I'm just going to go business as usual and see what happens. I'm not even stressing. Um, as far as sports, like in general, I mean, I don't know. It's like now that China, they were going to do that whole bubble method. And then that kind of got, they had to put that on pause. It is going to be interesting to see um, what happens. I do kind of think, I heard today Jay Will talking about cruise ships. I was kind of like, well, that sounds like a bad idea. Did you hear about that? Wait, 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 wait. I missed that. I totally missed that. Yeah. So he said basically like, so the whole bubble idea is that you take the players, you put them in this little bubble, right? So some people have said like Las Vegas, like put them on like NBA players, right? Like yeah, put them in a hotel, yeah, yeah. let them play. He, Jay Will came out and he was like, what about a cruise ship? Because it's those cruise ships are ginormous. Oh, and yeah. then you could have family, friends, whoever wants to be. True. They just get tested, go on the cruise ship, and then you play all the games. I was like, well, that's kind of. That would be a once in a lifetime experience. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get stuck out there, though. Uh, <laughs> just fact, takes one person. Like, and I don't want to say, like, if there's any choppy waters or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's How great. has that journey been? And if you can remember a moment where, like, you're like, oh, this is this is different. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's been fun, you know, um, for, for both for me and Megan. It's like, it's good to have somebody who's kind of going through the same things. You can either talk about it or if one person's not feeling working out that morning, it, you know, the other one's there to kind of nudge them along and vice versa. So having that support is really cool. Um, it's nice to go through that journey with somebody. And then, yeah, to, to watch her, it's, it's fun. Like, first of all, Megan, like, loves games. She, like, can't wait for the game to start. She's always excited about it. So watching her is really easy because I know she's just out there, like, having, like, the time of her life. I do get a little <laughs> nervous um, when, she, when she takes penalty kicks. And it's not – I'm not nervous for her. I'm just kind of, like, that it, she's going to miss. But I'm kind of like – I don't know. It's, I can't <laughs> imagine taking it. Like, I can imagine shooting a free throw. And that actually helps calm me because I'm like, all right, if this were me shooting a free throw, like I do this every day. I take yeah. a billion of these a week, you know, like I'm fine. But, but it's sort of like a free somebody throw else someone it, blocking. No, I know, I know, I know. It's totally different. It's totally different. <laughs> um, but yeah, when I watched her take those PKs in big moments, I'm like, oh my God, I hope this works out. But I mean, <laughs> as, I think since we've been dating, she's like batting a thousand. So we're good. Ah, good. good. A, a great But um, yeah, you but after the World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, after the World Cup, um, obviously, life for Megan, like, like, it was totally different. And this wasn't necessarily like the one moment, because immediately we knew, like, immediately, she knew, especially like, this was going to be different. But we were in New York City, it was probably like, I don't know, let's call it like a week or so after the World Cup. And I met her in New York, she had like a bunch of media stuff to do. So I just met her, we were there for the weekend. And we went to dinner with a bunch of friends and we were in, so we're at like Nobu in New York city, which is like, you know, a pretty popular restaurant. A lot of people are there and we walk in and the minute like one person saw her and then other people started to see her, the entire restaurant restaurant did like standing ovation just for her. She walked in and they were like, they got up and this is in New York city. And you know, New York city, usually people are like, don't give a crap about anybody. Oh, you know this better than anyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Playing for the Liberty. I'm sure they know it too. Um, you can get booed real quick, even by your hometown peeps. But anyways, so yeah, so that was the moment where I was like, yo, you just got a standing ovation in a New York City restaurant. This is wild. So that was probably like the starting point of it all. Okay, what about the hair though? Because I think you told me <laughs> once that you like going into the World Cup, you're like, do you, are you sure you want it Are to you sure? <laughs> do you want this to be purple? Explain it was actually pink. Pink was what she was going for, by the way. Like pink. I was like, you're going to be pink headed for like all the pictures, all the every like 30 years from now, every memory. And, and I was like, are you sure that's what you want? She was like, uh, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I want. I was like, OK. And then as it like played out, it turned into this like pink purple situation, which 
pretty much worked. I mean, she's still rocking it. Right now, it's quarantine life. It's a little suspect. It's but... a little icy. <laughs> it's a little icy now. It's a little... Who, who's she's laughing? Working on it. Do you have an audience? She's, she's laughing. Yeah. Wait, uh, my get audience. Her, get her over here. <laughs> you want to jump in? I'm get so over here. to join. <laughs> what up, girl? What's up? Yo, wait, can quarantine we see it? Life. Is it, is it, can we see it? Is it icy? Oh, it's, it's a just icy, like a no. little... Yeah, it's something. just like getting weird. It's getting weird. <laughs> And how, all these how lives, like I have to like do it or like put it under this hat. I can't just like throw it back. It's a scene. I, I'm really it impressed. Ma I'm really. Who are some other guys that you've built relationships with in the league? Because like we all come in, we all watch each other from high school level, support each other, and then uh -huh. we kind of grow together. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's it's uh, like I think back to my my early years and like one of the first Olympics because the Olympics is where you really get to spend time you know it's not just like fleeting moments of like hey what's up you actually get to spend like real time so right away it was like um lebron d wade and Melo. they were kind of the young bucks on the 2004 team and then it was like me and diana we were the young bucks so immediately we kind of clicked um hung out with them a lot that olympics and then kind of like as the years went um mostly again through the olympics so like now it's like like Kyle Lowry is one of my favorite guys. Um, Jimmy Butler, so much fun to hang out with. Um, DeAndre Jordan, like some of these guys. And then if you date back again, like now Jason Kidd, who is someone we you know would kick it with. Now he's a coach. Oh god! So actually got to see him at All Star, which was cool. I hadn't seen him in a long time. Um, my all time favorite player and someone who I, I still stay in touch with is Mike Bibby. Oh. And that actually started even when I was in college because we're like about the same age. He's like swole now. I know, I know, I know. And he doesn't have his tattoos. It's crazy. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I think we're about the same age. But he like, you know, he left after his freshman year. So he's, he was a pro. I was still in college. And that's actually when we became friendly, like that oh. far back. And like, we still stay in touch. So yeah, he's one of my all time faves for sure. Num <laughs> where's number 10? Team Dime. He's a passer. Oh, born I see the similarities. I see the similarities. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's, that's before before I let you go, girl, because I know you got so many you you got so many things to do, you know, <laughs> like in these times. Yeah, so busy, guys. so busy. <laughs> um, what about Kobe? You know, Kobe has had a tremendous impact, not just on yeah. you know the NBA, but the women's game. We all experienced that, you know, through his memorial. Is there mm -hmm. something you can share about Kobe Bryant? And I know you've gotten to know a lot of people. I think you said 2004. Was that like Athens? Yeah. That was Athens. Dang. I know Kobe wasn't even there actually. I mean, I'm sure he would have made the team. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> But he, for whatever reason, he didn't, he didn't come onto the Olympics till 2008, which is the first time I ever met him. The first time I ever hung out with him. Um, yeah, I mean, like a quick, quick course, a Kobe story about that time was, uh, you could tell right away. So 2008 Olympics was right after he, um, he and the Lakers got beat by the Celtics. So that was like, he was like fresh off of that. And it was like, you could tell. And so one night we were just um, like playing cards hanging out, drinking some wine, just kicking it, you know? And he like saw this newspaper and he saw a picture. It was like something about the Lakers series and blah, blah, blah. And it was a picture of Paul Pierce like celebrating. And he literally like, he didn't say a word. He didn't say anything, but we saw him like take the paper. He started cutting out the Paul Pierce picture. He like folded it up and he put it in his pocket. And he was like, motivation. And we were like, oh. It never stops with him. You could just tell, you know, like the competitive, like it never stopped. But I mean, obviously for, you know, now fast forward, um, you know, obviously sadly both he and Gigi are, are no longer with us. But I think what you saw in his relationship with his daughter is, you know, women's basketball and men's basketball, a lot of people like to compare us. But when it comes to like, just we're athletes trying to grind, trying to be the best we can be, trying to be great, trying to be professionals. Like, there's no right. difference between these athletes. And I think what Kobe saw in his daughter was that. He probably saw himself like, hey, I was once, you know, a young kid just, like, having dreams. And that's what Gigi was, a young girl having these dreams. But then when you look at, like, the destination, if you will, for men, it's like a clear path on what you have to do, and then you get to be a pro and everything. For women, it's a little different. And I think what mm -hmm. Kobe saw was, wait a minute they're not that different. And I want my daughter to have the same exact opportunities that I had. And I think that's partly why this is like my interpretation, like partly why he really was starting to invest mm. in women's basketball in girls basketball. Um, so yeah, everybody was impacted by him in, in some way, shape or form. 
And of course, um, rest in peace to both of them. Beautiful, Sue. Couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> Appreciate you, my dog. Yeah, Thank man. Thanks so for having me. For joining. Um, give me more TV show recommendations. Oh, I'll let God. you know. Oh, okay. You, I was like, you I'll let you know me. how I finished Tiger King. All right. Go to Ozark next. That just came oh, back I've out. I've done Ozark. I've oh, done yeah. Okay. okay. My bad, my bad, I'll my hit bad. you on the Union Pond a little bit. Yeah, 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 I'll see you a little bit. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.